Then uh, we shall proceed. And now it's Roberto Fernandez Bautista, uh, also known as Qboard, right? <laughs> yes. And he will talk about migrating to KiCad. Roberto is a member of the KiCad core development team and a full-time technician engineer at CERN in Switzerland. Thank so, you. welcome him, please. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's Martin Mejrin, and uh, one of the lead developers. And my first uh, major contribution to KiCad before I joined the, the development team was uh, an importer from uh, CatStar into KiCad for the schematics and PCBs. I needed that for, for my company in order to use the designs that we already had and be able to migrate to KiCad. And since then, I've kind of been quite interested in, in the migration process to KiCad. So, not many people know, but KiCad already supports uh, migrating for quite a large number of uh, tools, uh, and this is growing. So what you can see in the slide is, um, is what we support already in KiCad version 7, uh, and what we will be supporting in uh, version 8. Uh, so in, uh, in version 7, uh, in terms of uh, kind of symbol uh, libraries, we don't support anything, but that's coming in, in version 8. Uh, okay. What I'll cover in the talk is my aims to give a bit of a tutorial on how you would go about migrating both your libraries and your designs. So I'll go through and give a walkthrough step by step how you go about doing this. And then uh, how you synchronize your schematic and your PCB that you imported. And how to overcome the uh, kind of errors that you might encounter during the import. Because none of these importers are 100% perfect. So you do need to do a little bit of manual work at the end. Okay, so to start with, um, how do libraries work in uh, KiCad? I think uh, John already covered a little bit of that this morning. So we have, um, we have uh, symbols, we have footprints, and we keep these generally separate. Uh, for the symbols, we have a, a symbol library table where we define all the libraries that we have. And for the footprints, similarly, we have a footprint library table where we'll add any, any libraries that we want to use. Uh, the probably important part that I want to mention here is the, the library nickname. So each of these tables, what they, they do is they link a, a library nickname to a file on your computer. So, uh, and uh, we, we need that in order to, to be able to reference either that symbol or that front print in, in your design. Uh, and in particular, in your symbol uh, library, if you are using atomic parts, uh, parts that are fully defining a component, you'll be you'll have a, a footprint in there, and you, again, you need to have the right library nickname in order to uh, you, to to be able to to have the two linked up. Uh, in uh, Altium, there's a, a oh, sorry a large number of uh, different types of libraries. There's this uh, work workspace library database libraries, but the ones that mainly we're going to be directly supporting in, uh, in KiCad 7 and KiCad 8 are the PCB with footprint library, PCB lib, and the schematic library. And so these you can use directly. You can just put it directly into your library table and it'll work as, as if you, uh, you were using it in KiCad. I'll, I'll explain how that works later. For CatStars, to give a, a bit of a different example of a, a non-KiCad uh, library, so this slide's a bit complicated, but essentially what I'm trying to say is there's three types of files. Uh, so we have uh, files that define the, the symbols, a file that defines footprints, and then another one that's a parts file that joins the, the two together. So in a way, similar to, to the talk this morning from John describing the database libraries, where you, you have this separate entity that defines the metadata for your part. So to import uh, Catastar libraries, it's a little bit more complicated because we have three files, but we only have two uh, items in KiCad to map it to. What we do is we group it together. So we, we group the parts library and the symbol library together and we import that as a KiCad symbol library, and then the footprint library we can use directly as it is. Okay. So how do you actually go about migrating these libraries? I just wanna show this a bit step by, bit by step. Firstly, to explain the support again. So in uh, version eight, we don't have any 
uh, non keycat symbol library support, uh, that, that in version 7, sorry. But in version 8, we'll have uh, Altium, Catstar, and EasyDA. And, and, but in version 7, a lot of people didn't really know, but we already did support um, Altium footprint libraries. So you could already use these. Uh, so how do you go about using these? So as I explained, you've got your um, library table. So if we start with footprints, you go just in your preference, manage footprint libraries, and you want to use one of these non-keycat libraries. So you just go hit the little arrow key, add your uh, footprint library, whichever file format it is, and, and, and that's it. You can, you can just use it as it is. Or if you want to be able to edit it, in version 8, we added this uh, button to migrate libraries. So if you want to be able to edit these non-keycat libraries, you'll need to convert it to keycat format so you can edit it later. Uh, but you might also want to keep it as it is. Maybe you're working or kind of in the process of migrating between two systems. And you don't really want to fully move all your libraries over to keycat and, and stay maybe, for example, in Altium. And you're still developing all your libraries in Altium. So you just load it up as a, as a read-only <coughs> library that you can just use for your designs. So for, for symbol libraries, it's the same thing. So uh, we have the symbol library table. Uh, again, preferences, symbol libraries. And again, the way they will work, this, uh, this is for version 8. We don't do this in, in version 7. But again, you just select your library file and, uh, and add it to your library table. The, uh, only subtlety is that you can configure some options as well for symbol libraries. And I guess this is more specific for the, the Karsta libraries that I explained, uh, since we have these two, two files that we need to link up. So uh, just showing as an example here, so you edit the options. And for the Karsta libraries, you will be adding some information as to where uh, your, your symbol library is located. That contains your graphical information for your symbols and uh, how to link up to that, uh, to, to the footprint library that we would have loaded. Okay. So that's quite quickly just uh, showing uh, how, how to use uh, libraries for non-keycat. Uh, non now how to go about uh, using the, the designs. So I'll start with the easiest. So the keycat has a project import function. Uh, we have that for Karsta, we have it for Eagle, and we will have it in version 8 for EasyADA as well. So the way that this works, um, you just uh, open the KiCad project manager, file, import non KiCad project, and choose uh, which type of project you want to, to import. Uh, the way it works for Karsta and for Eagle, uh, we're using uh, the schematic and the PCB files. They both need to have the, the same file name at the moment just a different extension, and then uh, you select one or the other, uh, and it will just uh, decide and figure out uh, how, to, how to import it. So you, the process would be like that. File import non keycat. Um, you choose a file to import, um, and then you, you select where, where you want your new project to be created. Generally speaking, you want to have this project be uh, in, a, in an empty directory. Um, oh. Kiko will warn you if that's not the case. You'll get uh, some errors or warnings displayed for the schematic import, um, which you might want to copy and paste somewhere else for your own reference. Uh, and similar, uh, and then for the for the PCB, what I might ask you for is uh, the PCB layer mapping. So uh, in Catstar, for example, the, the you'll have certain certain layers which we can try to automatically map to keycat layers, but you might have a different meaning for that layer. Uh, maybe you actually want that layer to be in the top silk, but uh, we loaded it as a documentation layer. So you can edit that uh, as part of the import process. Um, otherwise, you just press auto match layers and, uh, and it will do all the, all the matching for you as best it can. You press uh, OK. And then you'll get some, some errors and warnings uh, for, for the PCB import. And uh, well, that, that's it. You save your schematic, save your PCB, and uh, we're, we're ready to go for, 
for any synchronization. So the project import, uh, the, the aim of it is to, to be as, uh, as, as easy as possible to use. For uh, Altium and, um, and other libraries, other um, programs like it, like Circuit Maker, Circuit Studio, SolidWorks, uh, PCB, we don't have uh, this uh, project import function. It needs uh, needs developing. So to import designs from from these tools, a little, it is a little bit more more cumbersome, a little bit more manual. You'll have to import the the schematic files is, and and the PCB files uh, individually and join them up. So I'll show that with a, with an example. So uh, I've got this uh, this board here. Um, I've got a link here. Is a high five. Uh, uh, Rev B board. Um, we have uh, five uh, five sheets that we're going to import as an Altium design and a, and a PCB file. Okay. So the uh, the first uh, first part of the the process is will be we'll import all the sheets. So we need to uh, open the schematic editor standalone. We're not doing that through the project manager. So in Windows you'll do start schematic editor. In uh, Linux you type uh, eschema in the command line. Uh, and then similarly uh, to, project, to the project import, but now in the schematic editor, file import, non-keycard schematic, you choose your file, and uh, you'll get again some, some error warning, um, and then you press save. But now you need to do this again for each of, the, each of the sheets that you want to import, so in this case we had to do it four more times, and eventually we'll, we'll, we'll have imported all the sheets, uh, and, and we'll have a have a folder full, full of files. Um, make sure we, we close the editor, and yeah, th this will be the, what your folder will look like at the end. It's quite full of files. Uh, we have a project created for, for each of these schematic sheets, um, as well as a symbol library for each of them. So at this point, maybe you want to do a little bit of cleanup and, and get rid of files that you might not necessarily want to keep moving forwards. So this would be my, my recommendation of what to do. Uh, you don't really need a project file for each of the schematics. You can get rid of them. You don't need uh, all the display settings again. And uh, probably you don't want to keep uh, symbol libraries for each of, the, each of the imported schematics. So I, I would suggest uh, for, for these uh, four file types, you can just get rid of them. And uh, the only one that you do want to keep is uh, obviously the schematics that you imported. And uh, it, it is useful to keep the, the empty page layout file because um, the, the keycard default files might interfere with, with the design and, and cover up some, some of it. So after deleting everything, uh, it's much cleaner. We, we just have the, the, the five schematic sheets, the keycard ones, and the empty uh, keycard worksheet file. So next, we want to import the PCB. So we follow the same process, uh, we, uh, but with a PCB editor this time. Open the PCB editor standalone, um, Windows file, uh, so start PCB editor, and Linux, you just type PCB new. And uh, then uh, you, similar process, file, import, non-keycard board file. And for Altium, there's no layer mapping, so you'll, you'll just get some, some errors and warnings, uh, which you can save, copy for, for reference. For the PCB editor uh, import, that's all you need to do. Uh, that's it, it's imported, so you can save it and close. When you press save, it will create a, a project for you as well in the same folder, which we'll do, use uh, now in the next step, where we'll, we'll build up the schematic. So, we have uh, these uh, five, five sheets that we've imported, but they're not linked together. Uh, the, the design that we, we originally used is a, is a flat schematic, so it's just sheets that are not connected by any hierarchy. In KiCad, they do need, we do need to have this hierarchy for now. It might, in, in a future version, we might uh, be able to work directly with flat schematics, but for now, we, we need to, to do this interim step. So the way we, we go about it, uh, just open the project that was created in this last step, and uh, you know create this uh, this root sheet. So when you click the schematic editor, it will will tell you, do you want to create a sheet? You press yes, and uh, when the first uh, step that I would recommend you do is um, 
you want to get rid of the, the, the border block because uh, it might interfere with, with some of the original Altium uh, design. Um, so you could use the, the empty keycard worksheet file that we saved from the, from the first step. And then uh, this is the, the most important process, which is where we're going to be adding manually one by one each of the sheets that we imported in the, uh, in the first stage. So uh, we start with the first one. We press Add Sheets. We add it. And then uh, step by step, we, we enter the file name. You'll get a few, few uh, warnings. And then repeat until you have all five sheets in your design. OK. And then the, the final step is because this is a, um, a flat schematic, uh, Altium has a, the concept of ports, but the ports can be a connectivity, either global connectivity throughout your whole design or a hierarchical connect connectivity where it's connected just to the sheet above it. So uh, the Altium importer at the moment is making a decision and it's importing it as the hierarchical labels, but we have to, because of being a flat schematic and we want to con connect all the sheets together, we're going to need to uh, convert all of these to, to global labels. So that's quite easy to do. We have a, a tool to do this. So you go through your sheets, you select uh, your, your labels, and uh, use the, the change to uh, change the global label tool. So right click, change the global label, and you just go through all the sheets until you've done all of them. And you can verify that you didn't miss any of them by going back to the root sheet and then try to add uh, a hierarchical sheet pin, import a hierarchical sheet pin. You, you click and you should get a little warning saying, no, there's no new hierarchical sheet pins to import. Okay, do that for the next sheet until you've done them all and you're happy. Yes, I converted all my hierarchical labels to global, so I'm good to go. So, that was uh, quite long for, for, for the Altium import process, um, since we don't support the, the, the project import yet. But now we're at the same stage as, uh, as with this uh, kind of project import. So now we're ready to, to synchronize our, our schematic and our PCB. So how does that work? So at the moment, what we have is we've imported a schematic, we've imported a PCB. Even though you might have R1 in the schematic and R1 in the PCB, Internally, Keycat doesn't know that they're connected. Each of them will have a different, unique identifier, uh, and we need to first tell, tell Keycat that, you know, join these together. So you, if you try to do a update a PCB from schematic uh, normally, you'll get a, a bunch of uh, errors, because what all it's going to try to do at this point is it, it can't link this R1 with this R1. So what it'll do is it'll delete that R1 that's on the board, and then try to add a new one based on the footprint defined in our R1 in the schematic. So we, we don't want that uh, for the first time. So what we do, there's a little ch checkbox there, relink fo footprints to, uh, sorry, um, relink uh, schematic symbols uh, based on the reference designator. So we tick that and uh, make sure that we have this one unticked because otherwise uh, we're gonna be trying to replace all the footprints on the board and we don't have at the moment the footprint library loaded up. So if you press uh, okay, then done. You've got your schematic, your PCB, they're now well synchronized like that. So your UUIDs will now, now match and any other operations that you want to do. So if you did a re-annotation, for example, uh, you, you'll, you'll be able to, to propagate that re-annotation between the two. Uh, then in normal use, just make sure that you leave that checkbox unchecked because you want to not link by, by designator. You normally want to be linking by the UIDs. Okay. Okay. So then let's do a design rule check. So we've got the two, uh, you know, the schematic and the PCB is nice and synchronized. So we want to make sure that everything's okay because we want to be using this board for something. So I'll press run DRC. Oh no, I've got 600 errors to fix. So yeah, the, these importers, they're not 
100% uh, uh, perfect, mostly because there's differences between the way Altium works and the way KiCad works. Uh, some of it also potentially because of uh, inaccuracies in the imports. We might have not noticed that when, the, when it was being written. So we really need your help here. Uh, if you find any import errors, make sure you report the bugs um, and let us know. So in preparing these slides, uh, I used that design randomly, uh, a design I found on the internet, and I tried to import it. I found these, these, these errors and I've reported all of them into the, into the bug tracker. But they all have uh, quite simple workarounds, so I'll just go through them one by one. So the, uh, the, the first one that you'll see is when you open the, the PCB and you just go to the, uh, to the board settings, is that you'll get this, uh, this warning at the top saying the layer name fabrication already exists. And this is because in the original design, uh, we do actually have, okay, you can't really see it very well, but there are two fabrication layers, two layers that have the exact same name in the original Altium design. KiCad is not really that happy with this, so uh, it's warning you and it's telling you, you know, you want to change one of them. So all you need to do is just give a different name to one of them, so Fabrication 1, for example, and then you can, can move on. So uh, next will be the design rules. So design rules haven't been imported uh, very well. I have, you know, created an issue, nobody's thumbs up. So if you do, if you are affected by it, give it a thumbs up. Um, so what you need to do is, uh, if you have access to, to Altium, you can open the, the, the design in Altium, look at the design rules, and, uh, and then convert, convert those design rules to the equivalents in KiCad. So in particular, we're looking at things like uh, the minimum clearance, minimum track width, uh, connection, annual width, as well as the vias and the whole diameters, which will be uh, some default value that, that KiCad would use. So once we, we fix this, and we run the DRC check again, we, we've, okay, we've reduced it a lot now. So from 645 errors, we're now down to 289. So the majority of the errors were, were just due to the design rules not being uh, fully imported yet. So the, the next set of rules, when we go down the DRC list, uh, we, we have these, these errors to do with um, this uh, kind of keep out area that was imported here and the, uh, around this, um, this ground pad. And it's telling us that uh, none of these uh, vias should be there. Um, when I look at uh, the design in Altium, I can see that this, um, this cutout is supposed to be a, a polygon cutout, so it's supposed to only exclude the, the zone fills. But uh, the way it was imported is uh, it's excluding uh, not just uh, the copper fill, but it's uh, excluding tracks, vias, and everything else. So it's definitely a bug. I reported it and uh, it's already been fixed. So 7.08, you don't have to worry about this issue, but if like tonight you wanna go and try this out, uh, this is how you can fix it. Um, so all you, all you do is you open this, the settings and you just untick all those and leave only the keep out copper fill. Um, so now if you run your DRC check again, we've uh, removed uh, another 10 errors, great. So, Okay, what errors are left? So we have a few errors related to, to clearances of the, of the zone fill. So just note that when I, whenever I've been running these DRC checks, I've made sure to untick the refill. So I wanna, make, I wanna keep the original copper as much as possible. So the, import, the Altium importer does import the original fill that's in Altium, it doesn't re refill. So why is this? Uh, okay, it is again to do with a uh, uh, an inaccuracy of the importer. If you open the design in Altium, you'll see that there's uh, quite a few different clearances defined for the, for the polygon pore, and it's between sort of five and 12 mil, but instead we imported the, the clearance as a, as a 10 mil clearance for, for that zone. So we just need to change the, that clearance for the zone uh, to just be the lowest number, so five mil. You could also go and do some custom rules to cover each of those other cases. So you can't really see here, but uh, the, the polygon to arc uh, is something like a 10, uh, 10 mil clearance. Then the next one's 12 mil clearance. So you could create custom rules for each of them if you want to, but the quickest way to fix it 
for now would just be cha change the zone clearance to, to five mil and, and move on. So the quickest way to, to go about doing this is you use the selection filter in, in, in select zones, and then you click and drag, select, select the whole board, and use the properties, uh, properties panel and change your clearance over right to, to five mils for all the zones in the board. So now when you, after you fixed all this and you run the DRC check, great, 24 errors. Getting there, we're getting there. We only have a few more left to go through. So the next one that we see is, uh, is this kind of error that we're getting here for this uh, polygon that was imported. Uh, it's uh, talking about clearance violation, uh, five mils, but uh, actual zero, so we've got a short. But in reality, it's supposed to be a, a polygon with a net. So in, in KiCad 7, we don't support uh, graphics with Shep, with graphics with uh, nets. That's coming in KiCad 8. Um, and the importer in KiCad 7 did the best it could. There's not much better it could have done. It's imported it as a graphic shape. It's probably the closest thing you could think about. But if we want to have have a net, the the next best thing might be to to convert that to a zone, and then refill it. So we can do that quite quick, quickly. So we use the create zone from selection. So right click on that on that polygon, create zone from selection, and then uh, just uh, make sure that you select the the right net for the zone. Uh, give it a very high priority level so that this zone's filled before anything else. And uh, give, a, give a very low values for both the minimum width and the thermal relief gaps so that you have a nice sharp kind of corners. Otherwise, you'll have uh, the corners a bit more rounded. Okay. So, and then once you've uh, converted, you can uh, use the draft fill zones because we don't want to refill the, the whole board. We just want to refill this little bit and uh, run DRC check again, and we're down to 18. Okay. The next uh, error we're seeing uh, is uh, again due to, uh, due to bug uh, that we are importing uh, these rule areas in the edges of the board, um, and we're assigning them to layers that don't exist. So they're, they're being assigned to layers uh, inner layers to, to, to 31, which right now we don't have enabled. So this board is just a two-layer board. There is a workaround to this bug. I mean, we need to fix it. it hopefully, will be fixed in the next uh, uh, stable release. But for now, you can work around it again. Um, the quickest uh, way is you open your board setup. We just change the settings to uh, 32 layers. So now we have all 32 layers. And then you change back to, to two layers, and then it'll when you press OK, it'll give you a warning. There's some, uh, some, some items on those layers that you've disabled. Do you want to remove it? And you press yes. So that will clear the, the error for you. So we're down to five. And the, the last error that we have is probably a genuine error. Uh, there's uh, two solder jumpers on the board. And uh, we're getting this DRC error that uh, the front solder mask aperture bridges uh, items with uh, different nets. So you want it's a solder jumper, so you want that. Um, so the the quick way to fix it is you just go to the footprint properties, um, the, the the press the next tab over, and there is a setting in the footprint where you can just allow bridge solder mask aperture between pads. I don't think Altium has this feature, so I don't think it's a problem of the importer. It's just differences between how Altium and KiCad work. So once you you fix this last uh, issue, hey, zero errors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, yes, there are some warnings, um, but uh, <laughs> but I think I'll let you guys uh, fix those. because. Uh, <laughs> Because otherwise, uh, my 17.9 slides will become 125. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, OK, uh, just to finish off. Um, so the, the way the, the process works uh, to, Im to import uh, libraries. In version 7, uh, we only support uh, footprint libraries, so you can only use the libraries as they are. 
In version 8, we've got footprint libraries and, and PCB libraries, and you can, you'll be able to choose whether you want to uh, migrate the libraries to Keycard so you can edit them, or you can keep them directly as they are. And then the, the way to uh, import is uh, either you do a project import, which is supported at the moment for Catstar, Eagle, and EZDA later on, or for the case of, uh, of Altium, where we don't yet have a project import, then you import your schematic sheets, import your PCB, uh, uh, and, uh, and then create the root sheet for that. After you've uh, done either of those two, you synchronize your designs, because uh, they're not going to be synchronized. Remember, the UIDs are going to be different, so you need to link them up. And then uh, fix up any, any errors that you find. And please, uh, if you do find any errors, please do report them. We do need more designs. Um, all these file formats are generally quite closed. Uh, we don't have a lot of information about them, so if you do find anything that's not what you expect, please, uh, please open uh, an issue or thumbs up any existing issue. And uh, in terms of what's uh, next, so uh, we're um, looking to, to write some uh, CLI import uh, tools, so um, kind of keycard CLI, PCB import, and you could import it all through, uh, through a script. I've been working slowly on the import wizard. It's taken some time, because there's a lot of internal keycard architecture that needs to work out. Uh, but it, uh, you know, maybe version 9, we'll see. And then the, there's uh, just thought I'd select a few uh, different issues from the GitLab bug tracker that maybe you guys are interested in. And uh, the one that has the most uh, thumbs up at the moment is uh, Orca uh, Allegro Importer. And there are actually two guys working on them. So uh, <laughs> I think Jeff Wheeler and uh, Wernie in the forums, not here. And they've both been working separately on, on, on their own parsers. So we might be seeing it in version nine, we'll see. Uh, the Altium project import doesn't look like it affects many people, so for now it doesn't seem like very important. Only three people seem to. So if you want it to happen, thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, the uh, Eagle uh, symbol uh, import is another one that's me missing. So Eagle uh, libraries are L LBR files. They have um, both uh, symbols and, and footprints. At the moment, we only support importing the footprints from those files. Um, but if you kind of want that to happen, give it a thumbs up to increase the priority. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. Thirty minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'm still in time. Any questions? Yeah, I also have to eat a little bit of humble pie. I said he'd never get through those slides in the time allotted, <laughs> so I guess I was wrong. Yeah, it went really smoothly. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, did never expect that. Thank you. Uh, I have two quick questions. One is, uh, when you import in Altium, you get a library per schematic sheet, and then yeah. you said delete that. You've already imported like the schematic and PCB libraries into the project. Do you have to sort of tell the schematic sheet somehow how to? Yes, yeah, so I use didn't the right want to cover that here because it was getting long. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see if I can do this live. Probably not going to work, but uh, okay. So. The way you okay, I don't have a, a library loaded up at the moment. Um, Oh, great. Uh -huh. Let's see if I can share, make it both the same. One second. Duplicate. It's okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So uh, this is the, the, the schematic we imported. Um, so the way you'd probably go about doing that, so let me check again. So you've got the tools, um, edit symbol library links. Say again. So OK, you could do that as well. I was thinking, OK. File, export, symbols to new library. And you could create an, a library from all the symbols you imported. So you could create a project library or global library. Okay. 
I'm going to create some high five or key cut sim. Update symbols. Then, come then and then you, then you get that, yeah. So update symbols in schematic to refer to new library. Press yes. And OK. Save. And now if I, uh, is it here? So now we should have a, where am I looking? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, library high five, there you go. So now it's converted. Cool. And it's linked up. And you can also see it by going tools, edit library links, and you can see, oh, there you go. They've all been moved over. There's something going on there that maybe we need to look at. But the, the, so it looks like the, the power symbols don't have other, yeah. Okay, the, the power symbols have not, don't get uh, imported into the library then. Okay, maybe we don't rectify the part now. No, no. <laughs> okay. Further questions? Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, how do we deal with the situation where I, I know there's a bug in an importer, but I'm not able to share the file that has it? Okay, you've got a few options, I guess. Uh, option one, KiCat, <laughs> KiCat services. Um, they have NDA options. <laughs> um, the uh, other option would be you could maybe only email it to one of us if you feel comfortable with that. Yeah, so the problem is it's not my file, so like okay. I, I can't even get permission to share it myself. May, then the next thing would be try to make a, a minimal design that shows a bug. So if you can cut down the file as much as possible that you remove any proprietary information uh, that you can just share the bit that shows a bug uh, with us, then, then we can fix it. Check, check, check. Okay, we're good. Yeah, the, the worst case scenario that is uh, better than nothing but should be the last resort is to report the bug and state that you both are unable to share the design and are unable to provide a reduced version of the design that reproduces the bug. And the development team will likely say, okay, we can't do anything with this right now and just mm -hmm. sort of ignore the bug report for now but hopefully another user will come by and also have that same bug and f see it on the bug tracker and be able to attach a design. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.